Uh, so I think I've actually encountered a bug here. After the last video, I pretty much went and took a break, but when I booted up the game again, it's actually behind by 20 minutes. So I thought, oh, okay, maybe it just didn't save after I made my last two choices. But then I went back to the previous video, and the thing that made it go to 140 were the words and the influencer popping up, right here. And then the thing that made it go from 140 to 150 was me putting in this chunk here. But right now, it's 130, and I've already submitted the chunk. So, hey, looks like we got 20 extra minutes for free. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so back to looking at this again. Um, I'm not sure what to put in here because the thesis right now is related to Prime Minister Blaine and Kazard. President Kazard. But the chunks that we've been coming across are really related to Karen's family and not really... Not really related to the people in Parges or the nation at all. So I'm thinking maybe we should just put in some random chunks again. Maxwell? Not so sure about this one. Didn't we have some other ones here? Let me just have a quick look. Yeah, that's the Maxwell. This one. I'm not sure what the financial implications are. Like, are you saying that Karen, specifically, is being supported by the party? As opposed to, oh, Karen works a government job, and the government is paid for by the party? And therefore, she's being paid by the party? Like, what? Uh, we can find out from Appleford. Ha! I bet Raban has no idea about Karen's entanglement with the party, nor has anyone of his followers. We should let them know, maybe. But we need a little more backing if we truly are trying to put the blame on Karen here. Pairs of chunks. Right. Okay. Uh, well, more dirt on Karen being related to the party? Well, the fact that her mom is a politician might be... might be a thing here. But why are we focusing on Karen again? This is not... this is not how it should be, no. No, we're back here. Exclusive interview? My daughter Karen is a kind-hearted person. <laughs> that doesn't seem relevant. Does Karen support her mom? Oh! If we say that Karen supports her mother, that might be something to... Yeah, that's an easy thing to spread a rumor about. The conflict is with... Karen breaking contact with her mother. Hmm... It, again, going back to, do I actually want to ruin Karen's life? I feel like I don't. Yeah, she's kind of a bad person for you know being involved with her patients and marrying one of them and cheating on her husband. But again, that's really not something that the government should be caring about. What am I trying to do here? Like, what is my goal here? That's still something that I'm very 50-50 on. We already put in one about Raban. Let's let's try to leave Karen out of this this time. What will happen if I just say that, oh, you know, Karen's not related to the party? Because I know, I know the conflicting one is the one that they want me to pair with this one. Let's see what will happen. Yeah. With a mother like Elizabeth Levine, I cannot even imagine why. Too bad. If she would have been in contact with her mother, we might have used that against her. Yes, the truth here, Ampleford. We are focusing on the truth, not just rumors. So that probably made me lose a antithesis here. Which is okay, because we're gonna find another one anyway, right? Are there any more? It doesn't feel like there's that many. Oh, the ticket! The ticket. Ilya's leaving? See, this one I'm much more okay with because it's actually the truth. We can just say Ilya's leaving. Ilya's making a run for it, it seems. Who can blame him? Why, we could, of course. Wow. Maybe he'd consider staying if the news would turn out to be against his liking. Oh. The news? Against his liking? Oh, something news here. Know that I stand with you. David Johns. To Raban. Raban. I could not help but notice that you seem to be under a lot of fire from all sides most recently. Even some of your most trusted followers are turned, turning their backs on you, but not me. You have been through some dark times before, as you have trusted me with. 
Remember how you told me that Ilya got your parents, Anastasia and Milovan in deep trouble, and you saw no way out? What? And here, you stand, you stand nonetheless, because you have pulled through. I will see what I can uncover to aid you. You'll hear back from me soon. I think this David Johns guy is related to Perko Leaks, right? We don't know directly, but it seems likely. Ooh, what does this mean? What does that mean? Do we wanna... Uh, it's so vague though. Got parents in trouble? Because you escaped from military service? Is it related to that? Oh, In what kind of trouble? Seems that investigator you're paired with got the Bonson bombings perpetrator. I'm impressed. Thank you! Thank you. Oh, that was the headlines. Oh, but no! That- ugh. Karen was trying to help Nina for so long and now she- she is dead. Okay. New prime suspect in Bonton bombings. Case to have been shot while attempting to escape arrest. I wonder if this would have affected Karen actually, cause wasn't she like, gonna meet with her or something? Today, right? Wasn't she- was it today? Saturday? Or was it- no, it was Thursday, I think. Hmm. Yeah. She had a firearm, and the woman shot a police officer who remains in the hospital, but now she is... Oh, she is dead. Initiative! Save Parjas! Oh... We need to stand up and resist. We are the Pargesian people. Our government is corrupt. The Khazar regime was never interested in protecting the freedom of the Pargesian people. More and more opponents of our government have been arrested, and we have to stop watching and start acting. The Pargesian people will no longer sit and watch their country being taken away from them. We have to start resistance against Demjan Khazard and his authoritarian administration. Updates? Ooh, this is related to forces of true parges. Since the FTP has been getting more and more violent and inciting unrest and bloody protests, we would like to address them personally in an open letter. Oh, or maybe not. This is from over a decade ago. Dear members of the FTP, we are all Pargesians, we all love Parges, we all want change and freedom for our country and citizens. We have the same goals and the same dreams, so why are we fighting? Khazar and the corrupt government are laughing up their sleeves at us, not even able to form a stable resistance against them. Please let us stand together in unity and resist the government peacefully. We organized a new collection of signatures from the Pargesian people in order to request a new referendum against our current government administration. For the pen is mightier than the sword, and violent wars will only be left with losers on both sides. We urge you to stand beside us, not against us. Hmm. These people are much more reasonable. September 30th? This is older. Unfortunately, we have lost many members to the newly formed FTP, who have been increasingly criticizing our way of resistance against Khazar and his regime. We ask that you bear with us, and please do not let such quarrels tear us apart. We are only strong if we stick together and act as a group and will not be able to cause true change if we let our differences divide us. We are all Pargesians and we all have the same goals. Let us remain peaceful, bold and strong. There have been many internal discussions lately about how to handle future protests and what alternative means we have to voice our dissatisfaction with the current government and their actions. We would like to emphasize that the initiative Save Parges is and will remain peaceful. Some of you are very discontent with how we have been handling protests and say that collecting signatures is not enough to fight a corrupt regime. But we do not want to get involved in illegal activities and believe our voices are our strongest weapons. Yeah. February 2nd, 2004. In our first meeting, we decided to arrange a peaceful protest march against the newly installed president, that Khazard. He is not our president and was not elected democratically. We demand new elections. Please join us on February 15, 2004 in Triflith. Starting point will be the King Mirren statue, and we will march down Triflith Avenue up to Lake Pontemkin. So they're super peaceful, but it's also kind of obvious that they've been trying to get something happening for a while. But one plus year later, like two years later, one and a half years later, doesn't seem like they're getting anywhere. Which is, I'm guessing, why people have been flocking to the FTP instead, because... Hey, if 
if talking doesn't work, they still want to do something about it. Yum. Message board. Ooh. Since the government has recently been actively trying to silence supporters of the initiative Safe Harges and try to draw connections between us and violent crimes, we have switched to a closed message board that only members with special login data can view. Please contact Anastasia Vart. Oh, so their mom is actually part of this peaceful thing here. If you would like to receive access to our messaging board. Welcome, Captain Ilya Janeway. Please enter your password here. Wait. Captain Ilya Janeway. Uncle Simos? That was on the note, right? Oh, the butter thing, right? The 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 shopping list? Yes! Yes! First try. Oh, this is quite Oh, it's recent. It's quite recent compared to the news. 2010, May 4th. Family communication. This was right before they immigrated, right? 2010. Dear family, your father and I decided to use this digital message board for our family communication since we do not believe our telephone is safe anymore. More and more members of our community have been disappearing recently. We need to be cautious as possible. Please use the message board as a primary channel from now on, especially if you mention other family members or places where we meet. This is an old abandoned board of an initiative we took part in some time ago. It should be secure and unknown to authorities. Hmm. That's why it's being used again five years later. Milovan Vart. Dad? Anastasia Vart. Mom? Raban Vart? Captain Ilya Janeway. <laughs> okay. Holy moly! I didn't expect that, Mom. You two were revolutionaries? You never mentioned a thing. It's quite bad, yeah, but do you think it's necessary to be this cautious? Please, Ilya. This was a peaceful resistance movement, not that revolutionary. Your father thinks it's safe to communicate here, as they might wiretap our phone. What is up with that stupid pseudonym of yours, by the way? Is that one that you use in those chatter rooms all day? It's called a chat room, mother. Please, just do us a favor and stick to this message board, Ilya. And for God's sake, please pick a secure password you can remember. Raban, we would like to invite you over for Uncle Simos' birthday next week. It would be great if you could join us. Hey, so Uncle Simos was actually important here. Because if it wasn't here, then we couldn't have used it as a password. Damn! <laughs> Damn. Raban. Very well. I'll join you in the evening after rugby. Rugby? How? Wow. Oh yeah, because he was the rugby coach. At the school. Yeah. It's just that the way he said it made it sound like he's in high school. Like, yeah, mom, I'm on the rugby team. <laughs> By the way, Uncle Simos wanted to invite Oleg Bikay. Just because his family lives next door doesn't mean we have to show hospitality to followers of the Khazar regime. It's too much of a risk. Oh. Oh, wow. That, that's why he asked Raban to take care of his daughter then. Wow, that's how close they were. You're right, honey. We cannot afford to be careless here. I will talk Simos out of it. Mom, Dad, Oleg is a good man. The world is not simply black and white. He may be a soldier in the army, but he wouldn't endanger us. I think he should come. It's a shame Kazard has managed to drive a wedge between people in our community. Sorry, son. I just don't think it's a good idea, especially not putting him next to my elderly brother, who talks very bluntly about hating Kazard and his followers. But Kay has always been overly patriotic. The police are already beginning these Gestapo-style observations, and it is scaring the hell out of me. But maybe you're right. We should give him a chance. Oh, their family was pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, is that relevant? I think so. It seems like it's all coming back to full circle now. Back to Oleg. Seems they were once literally closer than we thought. Yeah, but that's not exactly super pertinent information. Parents were Pargesian revolutionaries. If you put it like that, Ampleford is gonna think that the parents were part of FTP or something. Yeah, even they don't think they're really like... Yeah, it's peaceful, it's not really that crazy. Okay, interesting. Oh. Oh yeah, there's more, right. I don't want to join this stupid war, September 14th. Same year. I just got a note telling me to report for duty by next week. I was drafted. They're coming to take me if I don't report in. What am I gonna do? 
I don't want to join this goddamn war in this horrible army. Please don't panic, Ilya. We are going to take care of this. There must be something we can do. Raban, you know Oleg Bekay well. Is there a chance you can talk to him about this? I heard he's in charge of the unit stationed here. Can he help Ilya to get out of this? I will see what I can do. Try not to worry too much, Ilya. I am going to talk to Oleg and get you exempted from service. It might cost me a few favors and take some time, but I will get you out, I promise. Remember that one picture Raban had in his computer? Oh, is there something here? I don't think so. Yeah, we already submitted this one. Maybe that's just one of those, yeah. The one, what are you looking at now? Same stuff, same stuff, whatever. You had a picture in your thing here. But K, deal. Yeah. So maybe in exchange for Ilya not going to the army, maybe he let Oleg's soldiers stay in the school, which was why the school got bombed and then a whole bunch of kids got killed. Maybe something like that? He's a reasonable man, but first, I need you to go report in anyway. Don't give them a reason to arrest you. That will only make things much harder. Yes, okay, thank you. Yeah... We don't know if it worked out yet, so let's, uh, let's hold off on this one. Check messages ASAP. This is three months later. Two months later. Only for Raban and Ilya. Mom and dad are gone! They took them! They sent soldiers to our home! It was so horrible! They started hitting dad and yelled that this was his punishment! Mom tried to fight them off, and then they started hitting her too! These bastards just took them away! And now they're gone, Raban! What should we do? You have to help us! Raban! Please check your goddamn messages for fuck's sake! Oh, and then he never... he never replied. November 27th? Was that close to when the school got bombed? Injury occurred on... No. No, it's like two weeks later. So we don't really know why he wasn't looking at his messages here. His parents were abducted by Pargesian soldiers as punishment. Hmm. Huh. Can we weave a story out of that? Truly horrible. Yeah, you can tell Ampleford really means it. Then again, as a punishment for what? Maybe they deserved it after all. Oh, okay, so you actually meant it, but I was just making you sarcastic. <laughs> wow, you, Ampleford. 2.30. 2.30. Our workday is actually going by pretty fast this time, huh? Because of the influencer. I don't think that's relevant. Okay, what did we put in to get that again? I think we put in the ticket. Ilya's ticket, was it? Yeah, I think so. Home. Um, what happens if we just can't find a narrative? Is it possible? Because I don't know if we actually want to go this far just to nail a bunch of civilians. Surprisingly enough, we haven't found the conflict for this one yet. So maybe we should keep looking around and entering chunks? I don't want to join this stupid war. Was drafted? Hey, isn't this the conflict? Oh, was drafted, but it didn't say, did he actually have to serve? Promise to get Ilya Vart exempted from military service by convincing Oleg Bekay. I don't want to put in this one because it's not, it's not certain. Like, what actually came out of this, but, uh, it could be some good information. I'm curious whether that worked out, or what it took to convince Bekay. Me too. Okay, was drafted. Actually, Ampleford doesn't even know what kind of deal we're talking about, right? Oh yeah, no, it says right here. <laughs> okay. Was there anything else in the message board? Yeah, family communication. I don't want to do this one. We have enough people in Orwell, okay? We don't need his parents. Are his parents still alive? They immigrated here, but what happened to them? We don't know. 
Well, if we already have Ilya Vart exempted from military service in Raban's profile, do we really need this one? I, well, she should be able to tell, okay? She should be, but I don't actually know. No, I'm looking at the same chunks over and over again. Okay. Message? No, the message board only needed one password, so we don't need to... We don't need to do it again. What about with Elizabeth Levine? So it's kind of like focusing on either Ilya or Karen here. Oh, Sheltered the Pargesian army in the school. I didn't put this in. Oh, this might be the deal. Oh, I'm, yeah, yeah, this one could be good. In combination with the previous one. By that, Vart may have drawn fire directly to the school. Why would he consider such a thing? How mindless can you get? He deserves to go down, and so he will, by our hand. Ample Ford thinks she's like... <laughs> she's like an executioner now, oh my god. Prava City. Oh, another thread. Oh. Oh! The same date as the, the other thing. Maybe that's why he was busy? It has been done. In light of the conflict brewing with the FTP, I have managed to make a deal with Oleg Bikay, whose unit from the Pargesian army will protect our school. I assure you that your children will be safe. I hope this helps to convince you not to take your children out of school. That sounds like Oleg is doing you a favor. That doesn't sound like you're doing something for him, which I'm guessing you need to do because you want Ilya out of the military. Jelena Lavrova? This sounds a bit drastic. The National Army seems to have the situation under control. I appreciate the effort, Principal Vard, but I am not convinced that having a unit of Pargesian soldiers around the schools is a good idea. Are you sure that this won't draw more attention to the school? I assure you, it will be fine, Jelena. I would never do anything to endanger my pupils. Oh... They are as safe as they can be at my school. Thank you, Mr. Vart. I appreciate your efforts to keep Prava Secondary safe. Hmm... Yeah, that just seems like Oleg is doing something nice for Raban twice over. Unless, if there was a secret reason. Cause we know, we know there's a deal here somewhere, but Raban, what's Raban giving? So this is why Oleg and Raban met at the school. They had some kind of protection deal going on. Sounds extremely dumb to me. Raban might have done this in order to protect his brother, as he had promised. Still, this would let him look quite bad. So, why not go for it? Hashtag lousy deal. Good, we have a narrative again. We cannot spread it yet though. Not before Raban publishes his article. Keep searching around. Former principal Raban Vart sheltered Pargesian army in a deal to get his brother Ilya exempted from service before the building got attacked. Hey, the... <laughs> Something seems a bit wrong here. Okay, is that just a glitch? Okay, whatever. <laughs> mm. If we have to do an antithesis, I feel like I want to focus on Raban because that's, again, that's the guy we're trying to get right now. Ilya and Karen, I don't want to ruin their lives that much. So I'm starting to see what this episode is all about then. We're gonna wait for Raban to publish something, and then we're gonna hit him with the narratives. Um, not sure if I like this mechanic yet. We'll have to see what happens towards the end. Okay, so we have one at least, but judging by how things go, it actually doesn't seem like it's possible for us to... so far go against what Ampleford wants. Because like earlier, we tried putting in stuff like Karen is loyal to Raban, but then Ampleford's just like, oh, really? She wouldn't be like, oh, really? Oh, maybe we should we should change the narrative a bit? No, it's all about it's all about going all in. So we're back to this again. We can pretty much do whatever we want. Just put in some chunks. Yeah. Do we want this? Until, until uh, Raban publishes his article. We don't have a time, I don't think, so we'll just put it in. Ooh. The army of Parges forcefully recruited a lot of men into their ranks when the conflict with the FTP erupted anew. Seems Ilya has been no exception to it. I guess one thing that's always, like, 
a little bit unclear is what chunks will actually get you new related documents. Private, 1st Infantry Division, Prava. Nice pick. Oh, there is a conflict. Okay, so drafted. Shortened basic training completed. Attempt to flee from service. Punished. Discharged by local command. Did he fail or did he succeed? Well, it says here right in the military record that he failed to flee the first time around, right? But then he was discharged later on, probably because of the Oleg Bikay deal. Uh, in terms of making a narrative, I'm not the clearest on which one would be the best for making a story up here. Like, are we just trying to put shit on Ilya or what? Because that's not related to anything. <laughs> Heroic escape from military service in Parges. Attempted to flee. Followed by punishment. They both kind of make Ilya look bad. Oh. Yeah, that's just whatever. Leave it alone for now. Yep. Any other chunks we have? Yeah, we got that one there. And that's it for the insider tab. Listener. Nothing. Bart, Ilya, family communication, revolutionaries, eh, I guess we could put that. Eh, exclusive interview. Do we want to put that Karen has a lawyer brother? Kind hearted. Lawyer brother? Where is Elizabeth's campaign website again? Here. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> we don't want to put that many people in here because. You know, we don't want that many people in Orwell. Hey, let's put in your brother. Nothing. Well-known lawyer in Hillberry. I guess they must... Wow, in that case, they might see Karen as sort of like a, the black sheep of the family. It might not have been no knowledge that Karen and Raban were seeing each other while he was still at the camp. But wouldn't people be like, oh yeah, Raban, he immigrated here, and oh, Karen's a counselor, so like, what are the chances that she counseled him when he first came here? It's all kind of a little bit weird. Okay, let's try putting in the thing about Ilya then. Which one? I'm not sure which one we really want. I guess we'll try this one. Although, like, the, <laughs> the conflicting one? The... Companion text is like, oh, it was so heroic, but it actually wasn't. You only got out because your brother brokered a deal. That's my understanding of it anyway. Huh. We already have one here. Sheltered Pargesian army. Yeah, sheltered, right? That's our narrative. We don't actually know what happened, but that's probably what happened. To get his brother Ilya exempted from service before the building got attacked. Well, we'll just put in this one and... Uh, I'm still thinking here. I'm trying to think a little bit ahead to see what the effects of putting in either one of these chunks are, but I can't really foresee it. Because technically, he did succeed from fleeing from military service, but it's not like he did it heroically. It's because his brother helped him. So which one of these do we want? I'll put in this one. Okay. He got punished. Hmm. And his parents were kidnapped as a punishment. Oh! What? Is that it? Whoa, I didn't even put that together. Oh my goodness. Wait, are you just making that up, or is that... Oh my god! Poor Ilya, to live with such a burden. There is a powerful narrative in that. Coward brother. Learn how Ilya Vart got his parents punished for his own cowardice, and his brother Raban covered for him. Raban published his article. The time to strike back has come. You can go on searching for more if you want. Please take your time. She's happy about this. When ready, strike Raban Vart as hard as you can. We need to make this count. 
So we don't have the one for Karen here because I put in that she cut contact with her mother. The media that you're trying to... Wow, I didn't even put it together that... <sighs> wow, real mature Raban, jeez. Yeah, I didn't even put it together that the punishment was his parents being taken away. Oh my god. The big conspiracy you should all know about. You know, it's so hard to find thumbnails for this series. And this is a really nice big picture that we have here, but people are gonna be like, Oh my god, clickbait if I use this one. <laughs> the media are trying to distract you from the truth. Blaine and Kazard are conspiring against you. Hashtag traitors against own people. I like how the hashtag has its own section. <laughs> the rumors that I married my wife only to get out of the refugee camp are both extremely insulting and untrue. They are meant to draw your attention away from something way more important than my personal life. The important question should be, why is the focus of attention not on one of the most pressing and obvious issues? Is it not curious that during a national crisis like this, while Bonson is threatened by terrorists, the Prime Minister is leaving the country? Is it not weird that he is meeting Kazard, who is throwing him a military parade party, under the guise of a negotiation meeting? The answer is that this is bullshit. Negotiation is not what the national government wants, they want power. Blaine and Kazard want to control our minds by secretly conspiring against the people of Parjas. Since this is what that meeting really shows, and what you should really be worried about, I hereby call for a protest in front of the presidential palace in Triflith. Let's show these traitors to the people what we think of them. So how is this relevant? Is it like a pictorial representation of Blaine being in bed with Kazard? <laughs> like politically speaking? We can look for more, says Appleford. Please feel welcome to, she says. Yeah, I don't think we care about the picture or the first division. Yeah. We could put it in, but I don't know how the time is affected this time, so I'm just gonna... If it's not relevant, I'll just be like, whatever. Yeah, daughter. My daughter is so kind-hearted. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> is Amplefor gonna say something? No. No. I don't doubt that for one bit. Karen is a kind person, although she might have her own underlying issues. Again, though, for the 50th thousandth time, that's not really something the government should care about. Okay, so that's it here. Yeah, pretty much. Let's, uh, let's move on. No, not Ilya. Let's go for Raban. Can I not spread it? There we go. It's almost closing time. Past 4 p.m. We're now working more than eight hours on a Saturday. Goodness. How's it looking? Lousy deal. You sold the Prava secondary shelter to the Pargesian army? How could you do such a thing? You endangered the lives of those kids. Lousy deal. Lousy Liam. <laughs> it's all spread and done. Hmm. The fact that Raban made the deal to help his brother decreased the impact our narrative had. Oh. Good work, but not good enough. Raban is still around, and he still has a loyal follower base. So, what absurdities does he dare to claim this time? Oh, that's pretty interesting. I was so focused on the fact that, you know, this one's about Ilya, this one's about Raban. But no, I'm happy with this, because I really don't- yeah, I don't want to get Ilya involved in this, if we can. Plus, Raban is sort of like, old man screams at Cloud right now, and that's not really illegal. So I'm kind of okay with not, like, smashing him to the ground. Like, could you imagine if someone was being silenced for- I don't know, criticizing Donald Trump? The government is supposed to allow freedom of speech. He's not actually riling up an army. Protests? That's still all within legal zone, I think, so... 
Yeah, it's not like he's killing people. 